I'll start off with a creature that most of you are familiar with, the Wendigo. If you've been watching videos on this channel for a while, you may have heard me narrate a few stories about them. They're an Algonquian, legendary creature, said to still inhabit parts of Canada and the USA. In recent years, they've penetrated the mainstream consciousness, thanks to shows like Supernatural and games like Until Dawn. A Wendigo is a former human who, at one point in their life, became a cannibal. It doesn't matter if they ate human flesh out of desperation or for pleasure. They become consumed by an intense desire to eat more and more, developing an insatiable appetite for human meat. One Ojibwe teacher and scholar gave this description of the creature. The Wendigo was scorned to the point of emaciation, its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones. With its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash grey of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets, the Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odour of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. As you can tell, they're basically starving feral creatures, desperate to sate their hunger. No matter how much human flesh they eat, they're never satisfied. They always crave for more. That's why they're always described as having no lips, and they can never resist eating them. It seems likely that the Wendigo legend started to circulate as a way of dissuading people from killing and eating their fellow tribespeople, especially during a food shortage. After all, Wendigos are traditionally associated with winter months. In the past, this was when food was at its most scarce, and when famines were most likely to occur. Nowadays, many natives see them as a symbol of greed and the corruptibility of the human soul. There's a little-known folktale that has circulated around Dartmoor in England for hundreds of years. I'd never even heard of it until I read a post by Reddit user This Reasonable Guy. What he described was the legend of the Curry. It's said to wait near the graves of those who have died on the moor, waiting for an unsuspecting victim to pass by. If you wander too close, it will latch onto you and make your life a living hell. It has no visible form, so you won't even realise that the curry has attached itself to you. Over the course of weeks, months, or even years, the curry slowly convinces you of its existence. A faint whisper in your ear, appearances in your dreams, a cold touch on the back of your neck. As time passes, it becomes more aggressive, clawing at you as you sleep projecting its own face onto your family members as you talk to them, attacking you in your nightmares. Nobody else can see or hear the curry, making you question your own sanity. Then it makes you a promise. If you return to the moor, it will leave you be. It'll say that it's finished toying with you, and now all it wants to do is return home. By this point, you're mentally exhausted and desperate, you inevitably give in and return to the moorland. As you wander aimlessly around Dartmoor, it will continually whisper words of encouragement in your ear, promising that you're almost there, you're almost free. Eventually, exhaustion will overcome you, and you'll collapse to the ground and succumb to the elements. As you lay there, dying and unable to move, the curry tells you how much it will enjoy dragging your soul to hell. And like that, another grave is created. La Llorona, the Weeping Woman of Latin America Originating in Mexico, the story of La Llorona is as tragic as it is chilling. She's the ghost of a once beautiful woman named Maria. In life, she drowned her own children in a river, after finding out that her husband was cheating on her. In her blind rage, she saw murdering their children as the ultimate revenge. When she came to her senses and realised what she had just done, she could no longer live with herself. 
she drowned herself in the same body of water. Now, trapped somewhere between life and death, Maria's ghost walks the earth, searching in vain for the souls of her lost children. It's said that at night, she kidnaps wandering kids, believing them to be her own. She then begs for their forgiveness, and drowns them. It's for that reason that you're most likely to find her near lakes or rivers, weeping to herself. According to legend, anyone who hears her crying is doomed to live a shorter life. And those who listen for too long are marked for death. For generations, the story of La Llorona has been an effective tool for keeping children from wandering out at night. There's hardly anyone in the whole of Latin America who didn't grow up hearing this story. With any luck, they won't have heard her cries. Japan has more than its fair share of creepy myths and urban legends, and in all honesty, I think I could have easily filled this list with Japanese entries alone. Perhaps the best known examples are the split-mouthed woman, Kuchasake Ona, and the malevolent torso known as Teke Teke. Then, of course, there's Sadako, or as you might know her, Samara, the ghost of a young girl who will kill you in seven days if you happen to watch a particular haunted videotape. That was the plot of a popular Japanese movie called Ringu, which eventually got its own Hollywood remake in the form of The Ring. What a lot of Western audiences don't know, however, is that the plot is actually based on a Japanese folk legend that sprang up in the 80s, and which also inspired a horror novel in 1991. The legend itself is pretty similar to the movie. However, in the Japanese folk story, there's a number that you can call that will put you in direct contact with Sadako without even watching the VHS. First, enter your country's exit code. Next, dial 81, the Japanese dialing code. Once you've done all of that, Sadako's number is as follows. 090 4444-4444. She won't speak to you. She won't tell you that you have seven days left to live like in the film. Instead, you'll hear her making an extremely unsettling and unnatural high-pitched sound. According to those who have called the number, the sound is so disturbing that you'll want to hang up immediately. They've also reported feeling extremely uneasy in the days following the call with some saying that they can sense an unwanted presence in their house. Within a week of calling Sadako, something extremely traumatizing will happen to you. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll die. Her wrath could take on the form of a tragedy, or a life-altering event. Needless to say, nothing good can come from calling her. God knows I'm not going to. Fans of Stephen King might be familiar with the name of these ones. Knockers, or Tommy Knockers as they're known in the US, were believed to be malevolent, dangerous beings that lived in mines and caves. In England, they were thought to be little elf-like creatures, whereas in America, they were believed to be more ghostly. Whatever the case, they were widely considered to be real by both British and American miners well into the 20th century. The Tommy Knockers got their name from the distinctive knocking sound that echoed through mines just before a cave-in. Many miners thought that the knocking sound was the creatures hammering at the support beams, trying to kill the workers inside the mine. Others, who had a more positive view of the Tommy Knockers, believed that these knocks were actually their attempts to warn the miners of an imminent cave-in. Either way, this knocking sound was the most terrifying thing any miner could ever hear, and one they all dreaded, particularly those who were deepest in the mine. After the first few knocks, those inside the mine would scramble for the exit, praying that the support beams would hold out long enough for them to make an escape. Of course, not everyone would make it out when the cave collapsed, and those lucky enough to survive would tell of the Tommy Knockers. In reality, this sound was most likely the creaking of earth and timbers as they gave way to pressure. 
Be that as it may, these folklore creatures were considered the bane of many a miner's life, and a real concern for them and their families. Even as late as 1956, a group of miners refused to continue working on one particular shaft until the mine owners agreed to have all of the Tommyknockers inside removed. The owners agreed to their terms. Obviously, Tommyknockers are no longer a concern for modern day miners. That's not the case for people who like caving though. Some Spelunkers still believe in the creatures. You see, when you go caving, you might occasionally hear a knocking sound coming from deep inside the twisting paths and chambers of the cave. Some people, particularly those who are a bit lost, feel compelled to follow these knocks. Oftentimes, the knocking only leads them deeper into the cave or to an area where the person gets stuck, never to resurface. Whether these knocks are natural occurrences or something more sinister, is for each individual caver to decide. Just another reason to stay away from caves altogether, really. Strigoi, Mort, literally, Dead Witch. They've been a hallmark of Romanian folklore since the 1600s, and were the inspiration behind Bram Stoker's Dracula. Indeed, the best way to think about these creatures is as the first incarnation of the modern vampire. They're the reanimated corpses of the dead who drain the living of their blood. They're also said to have the ability to shapeshift into a number of creatures in order to mask their identity. There are a handful of ways that a person might become a Strigoi when they die. Firstly, the seventh child of the same sex in a family is doomed to become a Strigoi as is any baby born with a cowl atop its head. Those who lead a sinful life are also more at risk of becoming one. On top of that, anyone who dies unmarried, by suicide, by execution for perjury, or after being cursed, will most likely come back to walk the earth as well. Now, this might not sound like such a bad deal to some of you. After all, who wants to stay dead? But the Strigoi aren't like what they were in life. They're both human and demonic. Once they reanimate, they feel compelled to return to their families and act just like they did in life. The Strigoi's very presence weakens their family members, and as time passes, they die one by one. In order to continue existing, the Strigoi is then forced to steal the vitality of others, killing them in the process. The bite of a Strigoi is always fatal, and, unlike some modern vampire stories, can't turn the victim into a Strigoi themselves. It's for this reason that many Romanian people were buried with a stake through their heart, and their coffins nailed tightly shut. The last thing a family wanted was for their dead relative to come back and kill them. Despite becoming widely popular in modern fiction, and a staple mark of the horror genre, many Romanians still believe in the existence of the Strigoi. In 2004, a Strigoi hunting party was formed after a woman claimed to have been visited by her recently deceased uncle. The group dug up the old man's corpse, tore out his heart, and burned the body to ash. The ashes were then mixed with water and drunk by the group members. In order to present a modern image of their country to the world, the Romanian government sentenced the members of the group to serve six months in prison. Despite this, many people in the Maritinu de Sus area still drive a fire-hardened stake through the chests of dead relatives. In a slightly older case, though still modern in the grand scheme of things, an old man's body was exhumed in 1969 in the Romanian city of Capatineni. After the old man had died, several of his family members also began to die under mysterious circumstances. It was believed that he was a Strigoi. When he was dug up, the man's body showed no signs of decomposition. His eyes were wide open, and his face was twisted and red. The corpse was burned in order to save the old man's soul.
Hailing from Celtic folklore, the Kelpie is an aquatic horse that is said to haunt the rivers and lakes of Scotland and Ireland. There's also a pretty much identical creature in Icelandic legend called the Nykor. They're said to be beautiful black horses that stand near large bodies of water. If you ever see such a creature by a river or lake, be sure to keep your distance. Those who touch or mount the horse become stuck to it, completely unable to free themselves. Then, the Kelpie will slowly walk into the water, drowning whoever is glued to her. Pretty much every lock in Scotland has its own Kelpie story. Perhaps the most popular tale is that of a group of young boys who encounter a horse at the water's edge in Perthshire. All of the youngsters clamber onto the horse's back, all except for one that is, who stays on land and pets the horse's neck. He soon realises that his hand has become stuck to the horse. The boy looks down and notices that the horse's hooves are backwards, the mark of the kelpie. As the creature begins to walk into the lock, the boy is forced to cut off his own fingers in order to free himself. His friends, who have no way to cut themselves free, are carried into the water. Some of their entrails are found later, their bodies presumably devoured by the Kelpie. Though not a direct encounter, here's another story shared by Reddit user Mutan. I was seven to eight years old, visiting my grandparents in the countryside. According to my grandmother, she woke up in the middle of the night to her cow's abnormal mooing. She went outside to check, and saw me walking into the fish pond. I didn't wake up after entering the water. She barely pulled me out of the water before I fell into the deep part of the pond. I was shaking uncontrollably. She had to carry me inside. It took half an hour to wake me up. When she asked what happened, I apparently half-consciously answered. I was following the pony. The origins of the Kelpie aren't exactly known for sure, but there's one prevailing theory. Horses are dangerous animals. They kill more people each year than you probably realize. People fall off them and break their necks all the time, and their kicks are easily strong enough to rupture your insides. On top of that, messing around with a nobleman's horse back in the day could have landed you in some pretty hot water. This legend might have started as a cautionary tale which parents told their children, the moral being, never touch a horse you don't know. Ironically, the story of the Kelpie probably saved quite a few of our ancestors from dying young. Who knows, maybe you owe your very existence to the Kelpie folktale. As a little bonus, I've left a link to a small but nicely drawn comic about the Kelpie. It's down in the description. If you find yourself relaxing on a Hawaiian beach at night, be wary of the sound of distant drums and footsteps. It's said that on certain sacred nights, the Huaka Ipo, or night marchers, patrol the coastline. They're the spirits of ancient Hawaiian warriors, still carrying out their martial duties in the afterlife. They most often appear just after sunset, or right before dawn and are known to kill anyone that witnesses their march. If their torches are in view, then it's already too late to run. Your best chance of survival is to play dead. Avoid making eye contact at all costs. They'll notice your stares and butcher you. Some say that placing your face into the sand or dirt is your best chance of appeasing them, as they view this as a mark of respect. If one of your ancestors marches in their ranks, then they'll spare your life. So, if Hawaiian blood runs through your veins, you may be one of the chosen few who can watch the marchers as they pass by. Then again, are you really willing to take that risk? In Norwegian folklore, Draugen are the ghosts of sailors who perished at sea. They continue to sail the waters on the splintered remains of their ships, 
appearing on stormy nights to drag down the boats of the living. Anyone foolish enough to set sail at night risks hearing their distinctive wailing and screaming, the calling card of the Draugum. Then, after making all this noise, it appears. A contorted, fish-like face, soulless black eyes, a gaping mouth, monstrous in size. As quickly as it manifests, it drags down the sailor's ship below the waves, all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. All the crew drown, and their unfortunate souls are doomed to resurface as Draugen, cursed to drift across the ocean forevermore, searching for fresh victims of their own. In one particular folk story, a Norwegian sailor tries to escape this fate when he encounters a Draugen on a nightmare voyage. The man knew that the only way to survive an encounter with a Draugen was to make it to shore before it could reach you. The man does indeed make it back to dry land, but the Draugen continues to pursue him anyway. In desperation, the man sprints to a nearby churchyard and begs the spirits of the dead to protect him. In the morning, there's no trace of him left, but all of the graves are completely empty and covered in seaweed. Perhaps this story started circulating after a mass grave robbery took place. It's hard to say. Whatever the case, these demonic mermen are certainly enough to keep me on dry land for a good long while. People who have followed this channel for a while now probably saw this one coming. Much like Wendigos, I've covered skinwalkers a fair amount in previous story narrations. They're pretty popular, and for good reason. These creatures are the stuff of nightmares. A large proportion of Navajo people firmly believe in skinwalkers, and are cautious when it comes to talking about them. It's said that even discussing the creatures attracts their attention. If that's true, it's a bloody good thing that I don't live in America. Skimwalkers are a type of Native American witch. More specifically, a shaman or witch doctor that murdered somebody close to them during their lifetime. They often appear as animals, though distorted and tattered replicas. It's best not to think of this as shape-shifting. It's more that they're inhabiting the skin of the creatures they've killed. The more experienced the skimwalker is, the more likely they're to appear in a convincing form. It's not impossible for them to take on the skin of a human, either. It's rare for a skinwalker to kill without a motive, and generally, they try to keep to themselves. When they do wish to take a life, however, they tend to isolate their prey. They can go about doing this in a number of different ways. One of their deadliest tricks is to call out to you in a familiar voice, luring you towards them. Their vocabulary is often limited, however, and some even say that they can only repeat the last phrase that their previous victims screamed before they died. As such, one of the most common lures is to shout things like, Help me. A well-meaning bystander might run deep into the woods to see if anyone needs help, only to be met with a skimwalker. They aren't invincible, however and as such, they're unlikely to attack groups of people. Should a skimwalker believe the odds are against them in any situation, they'll likely flee. If you ever spook a dog or a deer or coyote, and see it stand up on its back two legs and run away, you'll know what just crossed your path. I won't go into any more detail about them here, since I've covered them so much in the past, but I just couldn't leave them off this list. If you'd like to hear more about them, I'd recommend checking out the Benny story that I narrated a while back. I'll leave a link to it down below. So, there you have it. Nine of the most disturbing creatures from global folklore. It's easy to dismiss these stories as pure fantasy. And rightly so. After all, the simplest and most logical explanation for anything is usually the most likely answer. We can all sleep soundly tonight, safe in the knowledge that none of these things really exist. Then again, most folklore originates from an actual event or encounter that slowly got exaggerated over time. 
maybe there's more truth behind these encounters than we'd like to think. I'll let you be the judges of that. Stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark. Zero nine zero four 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 four